If you've ever wondered what $100 will buy you at a fancy cheese shop, I now have the answer. Last weekend, I went to New York City to visit friends. I went with my daughter and my daughter-in-law, and we went for several days. We went to go on a food tour and, you know, see some sights and hang out in Brooklyn. My big goal while I was there was to go to Murray's Cheese Shop because I wanted to buy a bunch of cheeses that I'm not quite familiar with so I know what they actually taste like. I went in and an employee came up to me and she's like, can I help you? And I'm like, well, yes, here's the situation. I am trying to understand cheese better. So I have about $100 to spend and I want to get as many cheeses as possible and I want to taste as many. So that's why I'm here. And her face lit up and she was like, all right, let's do this. We went through the blues and then we went over to the bee linen cheeses. She knew so much. We had a fantastic time. La, la. We're gonna start with a soft one. This is called Valence. She picked out one that was a little bit firmer because I told her I didn't want to eat it quite right away and it is still very soft. It is a vegetable ash cheese. I tried to get as many cow cheeses as possible because I'm working with a cow so I wanted them to compare more accurately but there were a few goat cheeses so I did deviate a little bit. I'm so excited about this. Look at that wrinkly cheese. Beautiful. It looks like a rock but it's squishy. See how soft it is? Oh, look at that. It's like creamy on the inside, but then it's like hard right there. It tastes like goat cheese. It has a punch to it. This probably should be at room temperature. It's still cold, I just got out of the fridge. It's very much like a brie, so it's definitely strong. I don't know if anybody else is gonna like it. $21.99 on something nobody likes, eek. Oh no, I like it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just need a cracker to balance out the, the richness of the cheese. I mean, it sounds counterintuitive, like you should eat the cheese plain and know exactly what it is and if you like it or not. But things pair well with other things. I'm trying to taste that vegetable ash to see if that, like what the edge tastes like. There's definitely like a more pungent flavor on the outside that is not quite as pleasing to me. The inside is better, but it's much more mild. I'm just eating the outside now. Yeah, almost like that hit of like a bright vegetable earthiness. It totally tastes broccoli. Cheesy broccoli, but not in the right way. Yeah, I like the inside best. I've always wondered what these pyramid cheeses are like. No, I know. I just went to look up more about Valencia cheese and there's a whole video on YouTube about how they age them. They age these cheese at Murray's in the Murray's Cheese Caves. Valencia. 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 It's pronounced Valencia cheese. That's what I just said. Do you like it? That's pretty good. Hold me around. Yo, no, I'm sorry. It's a goat cheese one, and it's called Monte Enebro. They shape these, these cheeses into a flattened goat log and coat them in the same mold used for blue cheeses like Roquefort. The result is tangy and salty and minerally with the notes of walnuts. I thought it tasted like black pepper when I tasted it in the shop. And what Elizabeth told me, she said that this cheese, she's only ever seen it done with sheep's milk and goat's milk or maybe only just goat's milk. I'm not sure. And that if I wanted to do this and create something similar like this with Jersey cow's milk, she hasn't seen that before. And so she was like giving tips as if I wanted to start my own business or something, which was super sweet. I don't want to start my own business, but I might want to develop my own cheese. The other thing Elizabeth was doing this whole time that she was serving me is she was cutting the cheeses, the wedges for me, smaller than the allotted quarter pound. That That's the minimum they're supposed to do because she wanted me to get as many cheeses as possible. She was amazing. Elizabeth, if you're watching, thank you. It's like a little wedge, a little, little thing. Oh, it smells really good. It smells strong, but not bad strong. But you can see the center and then the mold on the top and it's softer there and firmer in the middle. So she was slicing me pieces like this to sample. It's like a goat cheese in the middle. Totally get the goat. And the edge is sharp and peppery. It is like there's pepper, but it's just the mold. It is really, really yummy. It's very earthy, but it's not funky, at least not in the way I think of something as being funky. There's a light and brightness to it. Mm. And a big old hit of pepper. It's really strong, like pepper, but there's no pepper. It's amazing. That is unique. It smells farmy, but it doesn't taste farmy. Look at the little, the little lines through there of the mold, I guess that's where she cut it. There's the other side. Mm -hmm. No, make a sandwich out of this, most expensive sandwich ever, wow. 
it's the pepperiness. I really, really like that. So I wonder how I could create something like this. It says, I think that you sprinkle the mold on the outside, like a soft, creamy cheese, almost like bel percanole, bel percanole, however you say that, and sprinkle that outside with blue cheese. Gotta think about that. I'm giving away all the secrets right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I might not share this one. I have some bee linen cheeses in here and actually I normally keep them in a separate plastic bag because they are strong. Even with them in the plastic bag, my fridge smells like stinky feet, which is not as bad as I thought it would be. I hadn't, I didn't know what that smell was. That everybody keeps talking about the bee linen cheeses give a stinky feet smell. Now I know, now I know what to expect. I know what I'm going for. Yeah, it does kind of smell like stinky feet. A little bit heavy, a little bit cloying, a little bit like, ugh, but it's not horrible. This is a raw milk cow's cheese. It's called Stitchelton. It's made by Joe Schneider and it's Stilton's biggest competitor. So I tried it in the shop and I really liked it. It smells very mild actually. Look how pretty that is. This is kind of how I wanted my paste to look more, more of this and then just a little bit of blue, but that didn't happen. It's mild, it's sweet, it's cheesy, creamy, and absolutely delectable. This to me is much easier and faster to eat than the one I made. So here's some with the blue. So I'm curious to see if this has a little bit of the fish flakiness that I had. I should actually eat it plain then. Mm -hmm. It does a little bit of grittiness with that blue. Mine might've been a little bit more pronounced. This cheese is better than the one I made. I should say I prefer to eat this cheese than the one I made. So what I need to learn how to do is make a cheese like this so that I can eat more blue. This one, is made by an Ecuadorian cheesemaker who married a German woman. This is called Chiriboga Blue. And they say it rivals a form d'ambert, which is what Gavin said my blue cheese look like, though this does not have as much blue as mine does. So whatever that's about. This is cow's milk and it's four week old cheese. One thing that was interesting in the cheese shop is that she was saying, oh, I haven't tasted this cheese yet this season. The cheeses each season are different, which made me feel better because I always have variations in my cheeses and I feel like, oh, this isn't real because I haven't nailed it exactly. But if professional artisan cheesemakers are having differences all the time from season to season, it's just like, oh, these differences, these nuances, they're okay. That's just how it is with artisan cheesemaking. So you can see this is much more white paste than mine was. Look how creamy that is. This one definitely tastes more farmy. It's very creamy and soft. They call it a squashy delight. So it is supposed to be really soft. I want to taste the blue. Mm-hmm. Fish flakes. So that's consistent. Grittiness. It's sweet, but it has a funk. This one, the Stitchelton, is saltier, a lot saltier, and doesn't have nearly the same fullness that this one does. This one has fullness, but it's not like this has more of a funk, a mustiness to it. Musty is the wrong word. If I was to pick my preference, I would choose the Sitchelton. That's just an easy, it goes down really easy. I think a more crowd pleasing one maybe. There's less to argue with, which means it's less interesting too. Less to argue with. Is that what my husband and I argue all the time? We're both interesting people. I got a little wedge of my cheese, which is kind of embarrassing. It looks like a gnarled old knobby of death. It looks like something you would get in the catacombs. <laughs> And see, I wanted something that's much more creamy like those. And this is just yellow denseness, but it's soft too. Huh? It's not that different from these. That one is way, way salty compared to these two. This one is harder, not as rich. I want to try to make this one. I want to try to make a She gave me the name of the place. I said he likes to talk. So I should call him or, or email him. So I might, I might actually do that. It's three o'clock in the afternoon and I am hungry for a snack. So we're going to taste another cheese. This one is Appenzeller, Appenzeller Extra Gormino. Oh, it smells quite funky. So it has like that, it's sticky-ish along there. It's very smooth paste. I've got the holes, here's <laughs> part of the cheese. And there's like the rindy stuff on it. Oh, this one is good. There's a funk to it, but the two is really, it's not elasticy, like it breaks obviously, see, it breaks, but it's very soft and creamy, semi-hard and delicious. This would go fantastic in place of Gruyere. So I would put this in potatoes that are cooked in cream with garlic and a bay leaf. And then you put it in a pan and put this on top. That'd be so yummy or in a grilled cheese sandwich and anything really. 
This is a really good one. This one is also a cow's milk cheese and it's called Whitney and it's from Jasper Hill Farm. This one she picked out for me because when I told her about my clabber cultured cheese that I'm doing, she said this woman makes cheeses that are without relying on all the chemicals and freeze dried cultures. I mean, she maybe uses some freeze dried cultures, but she doesn't use a ton of that stuff. She's trying to make it much more naturally with what's in the milk already. This is Alpine style cheese is washed in wine. Oh, I didn't know that and made for melting. It's raclette style cheese. She also said that she reacts to cheese. She can't eat a bunch of cheese. And this cheese, she had it in fondue for three nights in a row and felt fine. So she was wondering if that was because of the fact that it's more traditional, like not adding all the other cultures and things outside of the actual milk. Very thin slice, super beautiful, and it's sticky on the top and on the bottom. There's that rosy-ish hue that Raclette cheese is known for. It feels a little softer than the one I just tried, but it's similar. Mm, this one's even creamier. If I can make cheese like this, I would be, I'd be set for life. This one is harder and crumblier. It has more of a funk to it, almost nuttier, but it doesn't quite feel naturally nutty. Like I might be getting a hit of something that's not quite, I don't know, I'm making this up. But this one, this one is absolutely delicious. I could eat this for a long time and I might. So if you go to Murray's, ask for the Whitney cheese from Jasper Hill Farms. This one is what you should get in place of a raclette cheese, but it's mostly very mild, very creamy, very sweet. Just got back from Ultimate, I'm hungry. Let's try another cheese from Murray's. Let's do Emmentaler. From what I have read, it is a hard cheese that has propionic shimani added to make some big holes. It's supposed to be pleasantly sweet, sharp, and nutty. Okay, you can see the holes. Just a couple big holes. Which is really fun, like, that they get a couple big holes in a cheese that has such smooth paste. What I have been doing with these cheeses as I take them out, I save these stickers and then I backpack the cheese and put these stickers on the outside and then I can just save these cheeses for a few months if I get around to it. it smells delicious. This one was in their refrigerator section and like I could just pull it off the shelves like at the grocery store. They didn't cut this for me. It's very hard, especially around the edge. Like that part's super hard. I'm gonna try the middle first. Tastes like Swiss cheese. It's mild, it's chewy, but it's not rubbery. I'm gonna try the edge, a little bit like more brittle. And the very rind, ah, it's hard. <laughs> Doesn't really have a flavor. It's just kind of dried out and brittle, but there's no funkiness with it. This reminds me of a cross between a raclette cheese and a Swiss cheese. This would be really good melted in sandwiches. It would be good with potato dishes. It would just be good on a salad. It's, it's just a cheese. A little sermon here. Something I am realizing, my cheeses are just cheese. Like there's nothing fancy about them. And people have been going nuts about them. And you're like, oh my goodness, it's raw milk cheese. Give me more, give me more. Which is great. It's good. It's a good food. It's definitely good, but it's cheese. It's not like there's fireworks coming out of them or something really fancy or extra special. Like you can still buy really good or better like cheddar cheese or Parmesan cheese at the grocery store that has more flavor, more consistency. Like my cheeses are not better than anything in my mind. They're just cheese. But these cheeses at Murray's are also just cheese. They're good, yes, but it's not like blow your mind out of this world, something totally different. So this is kind of an epiphany for me that cheese is cheese, like yes, if you have Velveeta cheese compared to a good hard cheddar, that's a huge difference. Just like plain white bread is different from a good crusty loaf of sourdough bread. Between all the different cheddars that are out there, they're all good. They're not trash like Velveeta. Sorry if you love Velveeta. But all these cheeses that I'm making, all these cheeses that are at Murray's, they're just cheese. They're fantastic, but it's not like... Okay, maybe some of the funky ones are, but this, like I might prefer to that, that balance, I might prefer a plain common bear. I might prefer, I don't know, Brie from Costco. I don't know, like it's just cheese. So what makes, what makes the cheeses that I'm making special is that real people are making them. I make, I'm a real, real person. I'm a real person. I'm making the cheese, but real people at Murray's are making the cheese. Like these come from artisan farms where the people are actually working the animals and milking them and making cheese. And that's special. That's what people like about them, but you can still get good cheese at the grocery store. End of sermon. I just gave my husband a taste of Emmentaler from Murray's 18 month slow cheese. $28 a pound, and I gave him some of my bastardized raclette cheese that is not raclette cheese at all. It's just the cheese. 
flying taste test. Guess which one he prefers. All right, time to try another cheese from Murray's. This one is Old Farm Doll. It's a standout Gouda. It's a little bit yellow. It's actually kind of like peachy orange color. Traditionally comes from the Netherlands. It's smooth, savory profile. It speaks to dark cherries and dried fruit. And its fudgy paste is studded with sweet crystals that add a surprising, satisfying crunch to its delectably creamy mouthfeel. How exotic. It's really dry at the edge. There's holes in it. A little bit of round holes. It is creamy. It's really good. It is really, it is really creamy. It's very satiny. That's yummy. That's good. I wish I could make a cheese as good as this one. And one more in here, the young manchego. I got manchego because the manchegos that I have made, I hate them because they always call it for light paste powder. And so I would add light paste and it made it taste horrible. So I don't know what manchego style cheese from cow's milk is like that is good. And it has the cute little manchego mold. I love this little mold. Cheese is white and pretty, 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 pretty. That is delicious. That is really good. It is salty. It doesn't taste farmy or sheepy, but it is different. That's really, really good. Okay, I would like to make that. That's very different from any other kind of cheese I've had. I did not know this, but I really like manchego. New goals to aspire to. Delish, delish, delish. Wow. Today I'm going to taste the last one of the Murray's cheeses. This is a bee linen soft cheese that is wrapped in spruce and it is creamy. She said this one nationally or internationally, I think. Oh, interestingly, it has pasteurized cow's milk, rennet, culture, salt, and cider. And it stinks, so I've had it in this plastic bag in the fridge and I've been letting it come through room temperature. This cheese, when I was looking at it, I asked Elizabeth, I said, is this the one that you're supposed to eat with potato chips? And she was like, yes, you know that. I know it because I watched the YouTube video. I bought my chips and I have my cheese and I am ready to taste this. So this is the cheese. It's sticky. You can see how it's soft. It kind of squishes in like that. This is the spruce that's wrapped around it. And then the bottom is just the same thing again. That's it. I think you cut off the top, if I remember correctly. Skin that off. I'm just gonna do a little corner of it so I can see it. <gasps> and inside, it has those holes and it's gooey. Scoop it up like that. Ooh, it's yummy. It has like incredibly creamy texture. It has a little bit of that vegetable broccoli flavor that, I, that the Valencia had. But aside from that, it's very bright, like fresh. I'm eating the outside right now. It doesn't taste like stinky feet or anything. It's just yummy. It's like eating the best kind of creamy cheese sauce. Like, dare I say it, Velveeta. Like, it's just a creamy soft cheese. If you cut this part off, this little top part, lift it off, which you can eat, which I just ate. I'm a little bit confused about this is broccoli flavor. Like, what's the deal with that? And then the spruce is helping it hold its shape. Just scoop that up. Doesn't that look yummy, creamy? That is delectable. Wow. I can see why people like this. Mm-hmm. So now, there you have it. This whole thing is what $100 will get you at Marie's Cheeses. I spent $99.57, so how's that for sticking with your budget? I was pretty proud of myself.